Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We extend a warm welcome to you all to the earnings call post announcement of H1 and Q2. There FY are more than 20 parties in the conference. Hello. Is there any disturbance there? No, sir, you may proceed. Sorry. Okay, I will start again. We extend a warm welcome to you all to the earnings call post announcement of H1 Q2 FY24 results of VHX Babak Limited. Joining me today for this earnings call is Mr. Skandar Prasad Sitaraman, our group CFO. I'm proud to inform you all that Wabag has advanced in the annual survey of the world's top desalination plant suppliers published by GWI to become the fifth largest desalination player globally. This improved ranking is a testament to our consistent contribution to the cause of global water security and our technological capabilities in the water se sector globally. As we continue to build the growth from the previous quarter, delivering another quarter of strong results with profitable growth. I would like to discuss on the progress of our business strategy, Ridhi. Ridhi is, uh, denotes and focuses on profitable growth, success and advancement, global market leadership, free cash generation, and improved valuation. Ridhi has driven focus on uh, profitable cash backed growth and this is reflected in our improved margin profile and cash position which we have consistently demonstrated of last many quarters. The main cornerstones of breathing are go to market, basically it is building a high capable team focusing on marketing and development of advanced technology projects over tendered projects. Second, focus on engineering procurement, international and industrial projects. This will enable us to reduce the construction scope, resulting in better cash flow and also time control. Technology, construction and financial partnerships, Construction partnership should improve our EP shares. Financial partnership should, should enable us to remain asset light. Focus on ONM, annuity business with better margins, enables life cycle partnerships, and it's asset light and high ROC business segment. Global delivery model is moving from entity structures to global competency-based delivery structures. While we have a go-to marketing team, we will continue our focus on emerging markets like Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and rest of Middle East, Indian subcontinent, Africa and Southeast Asia, our core regions which have significant market opportunities and we will continue to invest in marketing efforts in these geographies. We are also in parallel taking efforts to defocus from saturated re regions, especially Europe, where we see markets to be more muted and invest the resources and time released from such markets to the emerging markets. We have already achieved breakthrough in new regions like Bangladesh and Senegal in last one year as a part of our go-to-market strategy and our focus on such emerging markets will continue. All these sustained efforts have enabled us to secure a strong order backlog of over rupees 12,000 crores with a healthy mix of 58% EPC projects which includes also EP projects and 42% of ONM projects, most of which have secured payment terms along with a robust pipeline of orders gives us the confidence of continuing our growth journey. Our 
focus on EP projects and international and industrial projects. As an advanced technology business leader, our order intake focus has been on plants in desalination, recycle, reuse, and industrial effluent treatment segments. With our continued focus on emerging markets and effort of our agile go-to marketing team, we have secured 55% of our order inflow in H1 from the international geographies. All these orders were won against strong international competition. Now, getting to the partnerships on construction and finance, Wabag over the years with its R&D centers in Europe and in India has built a complete range of technologies with over 125 IP rights internally developed and used. Wabag has always been on the forefront of adopting leading technologies and innovation to advance the efficiency and sustainability of water treatment. Recently, Wabag entered into a strategic partnership with Pani Energy to implement the applied artificial intelligence for treatment plants with an aim to reduce the downtime, energy consumption, and chemical usage. The platform will also help us to expedite crucial decision-making processes including better control over plant operation and thus meeting the performance parameters at optimized cost. This initiative will further ensure that all the plants we will get access to advanced technical and operational competencies, thereby reducing the dependence on manual intervention. Recently, we have entered into a strategic alliance with Al Jumaya Energy and Water, a leading developer of energy and water projects in Middle East to explore collaboration opportunities in water projects across the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and broader Middle East region. This is a significant step towards our commitment to support water sustainability across the MIA region. We are also in the process of exploring many more such partnerships across the emerging markets with our strategic objective of being asset light. Focus on ONM. We are one of the earliest proponents of ONM business in Indian water sector. ONM business allows us to remain closer to the customer's need and also is a very attractive, high margin, asset light cash accretive business. In line with our strategy today, over 40% of our order backlog is long-term ONM, and we see the opportunity landscape to be continuously growing. With one city, one operator model catching up across India, we expect to see larger share of revenues being taken by ONM in line with our medium-term goals to take ONM business to 20% of 20% share of our total revenue. A few words about our future focus. Waba has embarked on the journey to explore and evaluate the growing opportunity in green hydrogen, semiconductor, manufactured water, and bio CNG space, a sector with great potential. Wabag has a strong in-house capability and also is looking for strategic partnership to further leverage these opportunities. We are already a water-positive organization and with our focus on green energy production from biogas to innovative sludge management in our treatment plant. We aim to support groups, ESG initiatives through reduction of greenhouse gases emission and thus providing a cleaner alternative to carbon-emitting fuels and supporting India's G20 vision of a greener planet. Let's uh, move to order intake in H1. In last, in 
Now, H1, we have secured business uh, from uh, SIDCO of 270 MLD DBO project worth about 420 crores, a breakthrough for us in the region. This project has been planned to cater to the future demands of Navi Mumbai and is, is expected to be built over 42 months, followed by operation and maintenance for 15 years. Recently, we have secured AFD and BEI funded consortium order worth Euro 63 million for a 345 MLD water treatment project from Sonet to Nishia. The project will be executed over a period of 30 months, followed by operation and maintenance of the plant for a period of 12 months. This plant, once completed, will be an important reference project and will further enhance water security of capital city of Tunis. The ordering activities are moving swiftly and we have placed quite a few bids, especially very large, in Middle East region and we expect to convert a good part of them. With this enhanced go-to-market focus on Middle East and Africa region, which is expected to pick up further pace over the next few quarters. We are confident of MIA being WABA's next growth engine, which aligns our strategy to reduce our dependency on India. It is also a moment of pride and celebration for the group that we are nearing our centenary year of existence. WABA's in next year, 2024, will be our 100 year young and we are actively gearing up for the celebration and stepping into our next wave of growth. I would like to express my sincere thanks to all the direct and indirect employees and all the stakeholders for their continued support. Now we can move into the financial highlights and I would request Kanda to take you through the thing. Over to you, Skanda. Thank you, Mr. Mittal. Good evening, friends. Trust, you had an opportunity to look at the result update presentation as circulated and uploaded on our website and stock exchanges. Let me take you through the key financial highlights for the half year and quarter ended 30th September 2023. Our consolidated revenue for half year, FI24, stood at Rs. 1,218 crore and on standalone basis, revenue from operations was Rs. 1,113 crore. Our consolidated revenue for the quarter stood at Rs. 665 crore and on standalone basis, revenue from operations was Rs. 604 crore. The revenues delivered were in line with our expectations for H1, considering the strategic divestment of two European subsidiaries that we did last year in Switzerland and Czech Republic, and also a lower construction mix in the revenues on account of low, higher EP projects. The two large projects in Peru, Chennai, the 400 MLD desalination plant, and Pagla, Bangladesh, the sewage treatment plant funded by World Bank and EIB, booked at the end of FY23, reached effectiveness after customers completed their CPs towards the end of H1. These projects are now expected to start generating revenues in H2 with design and engineering activities followed by ordering with the revenue expansion continuing in the next couple of years when the deliveries and construction will be in full swing. Thus, for H2, we are well prepared to grow year over year. The consolidated EBITDA for half year FI24 was up at Rs. 164 crore at 13.4%, over 200 bips improvement year over year. 
The standalone EBITDA also stood at a strong 13.8% for the half year and was up at 153 crores. Our strong margin profile is a direct reflection of the execution efficiencies and better mix of EP, industrial and international projects along with growing O&M revenues. As you know, these are two of the cornerstones of Vridhi, our strategy to progress on the path of profitable growth, positive cash flows and quantum improvement in our valuations. Vridhi was put into action with an objective to enable the group on a transformational growth path and over the last couple of years, we are already seeing the right signs that our strategy is working well. We have delivered another quarter and half year of profitable growth which is our pack growing faster than the top line. The profit after tax for H1 stood at 110 crore on consolidated basis, up 43% year over year, and on standalone basis at 101 crore, up 70% year over year. We continue to remain asset light with our return on capital employed, ROCE, ranging over 20% for H1. Our stated strategy has been to remain asset light and assume only a minority stake in the capital projects, that is, ham and boot projects. We currently have two ham projects, Diga Kankarbag STPs and Graziabad PTRO under construction, for which discussion with potential equity partners to assume majority stake is underway. In order to expedite these projects, on their progress, we have invested capital to the tune of about rupees 74 crore. Both these projects are currently heading to completion by H1 of next year, before which we intend to induct equity partners to take over majority stake, which will in turn enable us to monetize in order to recover the capital invested by us in these project SPVs and deconsolidate the SPVs from our balance sheet. On these HAM projects, as part of our group balance sheet today, we have consolidated a debt of rupees 64 crores and gross working capital of about 220 crores. As mentioned earlier, this is only a temporary effect and will be removed soon with the induction of the equity partner. Excluding the effects of these HAM SPVs for H1, which is a temporary effect, as I mentioned earlier, our net cash position as at H1 stood at rupees 130 crores. Gross debt remained flat from March 2023. We generated operational cash flow of about 70 crores and free cash flow of about 60 crores, 60. This signifies that our robust cash management efforts have yielded the desired results. Mr. Mittal has already given a brief outline of our business strategy and our numbers in this quarter are also reflective of the same. We continue to remain a strong global player with around 44% of our H1 revenue coming from the rest of the world and about 40% of our order backlog still coming from the overseas geographies. Strong O&M outlook with over 40% of the order backlog coming from operation and maintenance business. The quality of the order book is excellent with a majority mix of multilateral and central government funded projects, industrial jobs backed by adequate payment securities largely in desalination and wastewater treatment including recycled reuse and industrial effluent treatment space. Our go-to-market teams are focused on emerging markets where the growth and market opportunities are significantly higher while we continue to strategically defocus from the European region. Our partnerships with developer entities in the Middle East geographies, construction partnerships across the globe to improve EP, EP mix, sorry, Financial partnerships with various marquee institutions to remain asset light and biased towards digitalization and new age technologies like AI 
make us a stronger player for the future. We express our heartfelt thanks to our bankers, investors, fellow Vaba guides, and all other stakeholders for their continued support extended to us. With this, we now open the floor for question and answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please restrict your questions to two per participant. If you have any follow-up questions, you may rejoin the queue. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please proceed. Yes. Good evening, sir. And thanks for the opportunity. So good to see an improvement in EBITDA margin, which is substantial. But the first question on the revenue, sir, the first the first H1, I think we have seen a decline in revenue uh, of, of, of 10% odd. How do you see the revenue planning out for FY24? And if you can give, give some guidance for FY25, that will be very helpful. I think, Mohit, uh, we have been saying this in our earlier calls also, and regularly we have been informing through stock exchange. Last year, we have done two divestments of our European entities. And bulk of this top-line decline you see is coming from these two entities. Now, obviously, when the top-line decline comes, the reason we have divested because we were never able to make money there because the margins were very flat in Europe, especially in the Western and Central Europe. There's hardly any growth opportunity. Hence, we have divested that, and that is where the major you see a decline because last year the numbers include these two entities and this year this number does not include these two entities. Number two, as we have said before, number of our projects which were under execution were slowing down and in the last month of last year we had got some large projects which were the Bangladesh, Peru and other projects. Now, these are all multilaterally funded projects. One was by World Bank, other was by Japanese fund, JICA. They all take some time, and as it's a stated policy, that till the financially the project is secured and letters of credit is opened or advance payments are made, we will not start the project. This All this condition precedent were completed towards the end of first half, and now we are started the in design and engineering because these are all design and construct jobs. We have to do the designing. So design engineering work has started. Maybe for next few months, design engineering will continue. Post that, the construction and ordering activities will start. So the visibility on H2 is definitely going to be better than the H2 of last year. And Overall, on a yearly basis, our top line will also be better than last year. Understood, sir. So, my second question on the order inflow was: so order inflow has also been very tepid, and I think we had guided for. A, I think we had a, we had made a observation that this year could be as good as the last year. Do you think is that is that possible? And what is delaying the finalization of the tender, especially in the Middle East? Definitely, water is happening sector. Since uh, last few years, we have been seeing globally there's a huge focus on water, and uh, this includes India also. A lot of money is getting allocated, projects are getting announced, and of course, these are being the government projects. The implementation is little slow and decision-making is slow. But these are very firm 
models and uh, we have ourselves put in a very large bids both in uh, India and Middle East. And some of them are definitely going to get converted during this financial year. And this will give us a very solid start for the next financial year. And in Middle East, each project values are much higher than the project values in India for a comparable size of project because there are rich specification in those countries. So, Baba is very well placed, especially with advanced technology or you call a manufactured water projects where we are well placed and I'm sure very soon we will be able to share some good news with you all. Understood, sir. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kaushik Podar from KB Capital Markets Private Limited. Please proceed. Yeah, uh, on the on the slide deck, can you please uh, speak a little bit on the slide number 10, which basically speaks about your future uh, growth areas? Slide number 10. Uh, biogas to see a new initiatives. Basically, it's a new initiatives. The slide on new initiatives. Just hold on, I'll get hold of my presentation. Yeah? Okay. Give us 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, we got the presentation, which is slide number? 10. Yeah, got it. Yeah. yeah, I just want you to speak a bit on the four uh, sub-segments of new initiatives. Fantastic. You know, Babak is a technology-based pure play water company. We have always mentioned and we continue to be a pure play water company. We don't want to diversify into any other field. We have expertise, our domain knowledge is on this water, and we want to continue that. All the four initiatives you see here are only related to water. Number one, I want to make it very clear. Yeah, yes. So number one is about biogas to either power or bio CNG. This initiative is nothing new. We have been building this plant over the last two decades. We were converting biogas to power to make the power neutral plants so that the power required to operate the plant is also coming from the power we generate from the biogas we produce in the treatment process. Now we are saying we will move to a higher value chain, which is bio CNG. That definitely is a higher value chain compared to burning this biogas to convert into energy. That's number one initiative. Number two, green hydrogen. The whole world is talking about green hydrogen. We are very clear. We want to remain as a water partner to the various developers, and the industries who are going for green hydrogen, they require pure water so that there's no scaling happening of electrodes which are there in water to produce hydrogen. And we will be their partner to give them this pure water required for hydrogen production. That's our second initiative. Okay. Third initiative, post-COVID, lot of countries realized that they can't depend for cross-border importing of these chips. As a result, there was a huge supply chain issue in this semiconductor supply as a result on various electronic manufacturing goods. So each of these countries, including the developed world, is today making their own facilities to produce these chips. And this semiconductor is such a high level of water which is required, is extra purity water. We did a project a few years back in Middle East 
for one of the semiconductor manufacturing facilities. Now, of course, in last 10 years, the technology has moved on. And we want to be part of it because not only we, it is right in our domain expertise, but we also have a past experience. We just want to enrich the technology, what we have. Either we want to do it in-house or we don't mind going and licensing something, what is the best available in the market, and be a supplier of a pure water required for semiconductor manufacturing. Okay. That was a third initiative. The last is about AI. See, water is in demand. Lot of projects are happening. Skilled, experienced manpower is going to be definitely in short supply. We are today a market leaders, not only in India, but globally. But still, with the speed at which we are growing, both the EPC business as well as O&M business, there will be high demand of skilled and experienced manpower. We are trying to manage this growth by applying digitization in our plant so that we can get the best performance in our plants. And these are not dependent on people. People will put the systems in place, put the programs in place, and rest AI will do the job, will give the necessary instructions required to the operating team and will not tax on the skilled manpower's time. And this all will be repeatable, reproducible kind of knowledge which will be stored in the AI platform. This is the last initiative we are working on. Okay. Okay, thank you. And see, uh, I was just going to a shareholding. I think promoters own uh, as of now around 19% or something. And um, uh, I mean, you have been in the saddle for quite some time. And uh, can we see some kind of merger, m and sort of thing in, uh, in in future, in near future? We don't work towards it. We okay. keep our head low and do the business what we know. Okay. If there is ever an opportunity which comes our way, which is to the benefit of all the shareholders, we'll consider it, but there is no active movement towards that. Today we are working, as we discussed in both in my speech and Skanda's speech, we have embarked on this ready journey, which is our strategy, which we came up two years back and we are working on it. And with that, we are very confident going forward, we ourselves will improve the valuation of the company. Great. And my last question, I mean, uh, I think two, three years back also, you, you used to hold out a, a, a projection for the whole year. Uh, so are you giving sign of projection for this fiscal? We normally because business is normal right now. For the last three years since COVID, we have okay. stopped giving any... Yeah, before COVID, you used to give it, and right now we are in normal stage. There is no COVID, so that from that point of view, I, I, I am holding you. Absolutely, you are right. But somehow we have lost that touch of giving a forward-looking numbers. Maybe we will have to think internally, and uh, if required, maybe in the last quarter, we can give some projection for the next financial year. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Aman from Aman Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity. And congratulations on the, a good set of numbers and also for the achieving a milestone of fifth largest desanitation plan. Sir, I have just two questions. How are, what is our outlook on the circular economy which is going on? It's playing out and... What do you feel? What pressures do we feel? What opportunities we have in this cycle? And also on the theme of uh, being global but acting local, if you can just comment on uh, these things. And next question will be followed after the answer. Thank you. Okay. Too many things. Let's uh, first talk about your circular economy. I think our business itself, Whatever we have talked to you is all about recycle, reuse, 
like we told you, the wastewater which we treat, we recycle the water which is becoming a source uh, for the industry and commercial establishments. The gas which we generate from wastewater treatment becomes a source for energy or CNG. And also, the total water conservation which we do in return where we are recycling the water or producing desalination water we are releasing the good quality fresh water for the domestic users. So that way we are contributing to a circular economy by doing a total resource recovery from a wastewater. That nothing will go waste including the solid which is generated in the wastewater treatment. They go back to the farms as a fertilizer because they are rich in nitrogen potash and phosphorus and even government is giving benefit to us if we sell it to the farmers. So in, in a way, our business is all about circular economy, Its business is about resource recovery. So we are contributing to a large extent to this topic of circular economy. Number two, you talked about a global company acting local. That has been our philosophy from day one. We call it go local, which is global, but be local. Uh, think global, act local. That has been our mantra for many, many years now. And today, I think with all the units, like 25 units we have across globe, each one has a certain capability to act themselves locally and some support which comes from the group. Even our... Uh, del global delivery centers are moving towards that. Having an establishment at various locations which will deliver the projects. So I think we are very much fitting into a think global, act local. Yes, sir. so the second question is on the order books. We have a quite a robust order book. And how uh, there are two parts to this question. Sir. If you can just give us a timeline on the completion of order books in the ranges of uh, years and secondly, uh, going forward, uh, what kind of growth do we see in this order book coming in, and uh, what will be the mix of both industrial and municipal be, and the mix of uh, India and abroad be? Thank you. Sir. In one question, you have so many questions. Huh? Yes, sir. Because time is less. Sorry. No problem. No problem. We'll take it one by one if you remember it. See, I think uh, basically. In the order book, you have two types of projects. One are construction, which are EP or EPC projects. The other is the services, which is ONM projects. So you would see about 60% of that is construction, EPC, EP projects, and 40% will be about ONM projects. EPC projects, you can take average of about 36 months. And uh, ONM projects can be anything ranging from 5, 7 years going up to 15, 20 years. So that is the duration of time. What is the growth in order book you will have? We generally hope and plan to be very selective in what we take, looking at the cash flow and the profitability and payment security as a Kanda had explained, 15 to 20 percent growth we look at order book as we go forward. What will be the mix of uh, industry projects to the municipal projects? We hope for 30 to 70 percent is a mix in industrial to municipal projects. I hope I've answered most of your questions. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Sure. I'll just join the team. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kushbu Gandhi from Share India. Please proceed. Yes, sir. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. So my first question is regarding the uh, the larger projects which we have bidded in Middle East. This you had given in the commentary. 
So can you quantify what amount of projects we have bidded and uh, when can we expect any order info from the same? The orders which we would have bidded in last few quarters would be in excess of 1 billion US dollar. And uh, we hope that we'll definitely convert some of them within this financial year. Okay. And so, uh, regarding on the revenue front, uh, since now uh, we uh, post divestment of our two European subsidiaries, so uh, can we get an amount? What was the revenue generated from these two European subsidiaries last uh, financial year? During the last quarter, too? Yeah, uh, so for the first half on comparable basis, about 10 to 12 million. So on an annual basis, about anywhere between 20 to 25 million would be the like-to-like -like comparison on these two SPVs. Oh, sorry, these two subsidies. Okay. And uh, so uh, it can give us a percentage about uh, how much of the percentage of revenue was through EP business uh, and uh, how much from through the EPC? We have just started, you know, this uh, strategic initiative and uh, we are just building up our EP pipeline, but uh, I think you can say one third to two thirds. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So one third of your revenue of quarter two was from EP business uh, of the EPC revenue generation, right? Yeah, roughly. See, uh, don't devaluate us quarter to quarter. Uh, we are we are not in a product business. We are in a project business. Generally, about one third of our EPC uh, revenues come from EP, and the remaining come from EPC. Okay. Okay, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please restrict your questions to two per participant. Next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from JM Financial PMS. Please go ahead. Hello. Sir, am I audible? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, good evening. And thank you for the opportunity. Be a little louder. Hi, sir. Good, mo uh, good evening. And thank you for the opportunity. Good evening. Yeah, so I just have two questions rest are being answered and addressed. So uh, just I wanted to understand uh, the revenue and EBITDA margin if we consider divestment of two subsidiaries specifically for Q2. So I wanted to understand the growth and uh, the margins which we made uh, last year specifically in Q2. Rahul, uh, as I said, about uh, 10 to 12 million is the uh, half yearly revenues. Yeah. Uh, so about 5-6 million is the is the quarter revenues if you take their generally annuated uh, revenues, about 5-6 million every uh, quarter. But as we said, the European business is very low uh, in terms of their uh, EBITDA. And that was one of the reasons why we also took the position to strategically divest. So this divestment, if at all, has only improved the EBITDA uh, in line with our strategy. Sure, sure, sir. Uh, so my second question will be, uh, what is the order pipeline right now, if we consider not only for India, but also for uh, the other countries you mentioned, like Middle East, Africa, Southeast Asia? So can you give some uh, uh, number or in terms of MLD? See, we can only say the order pipeline is really looking good. It's a solid pipeline. This is what makes us very bullish about our future. And uh, rest all will depend whether the decision making happens on time, how many of these projects get decided in this financial year, and how many of those projects which get decided, we can win. But Irrespective of that, we have enough volume today and we definitely will add a substantial amount to already the big order book which we are today projecting. We'll add to that by end of the year. 
ओके सर दैट्स हेल्पफुल एंड गुड लक फॉर ग्रेट क्यू टू सर एंड थैंक यू एंड हैप्पी दिवाली सर यू आल्सो राहुल या थैंक यू थैंक यू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ धनंजय कुमार मिश्रा फ्रॉम सुनिधि सिक्योरिटीज प्लीज गो अहेड yeah good evening sir uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulation on good margin performance and also in terms of profitability so uh, so it is concerned this then we have taken to exit to europe or exit temporary or maybe in once the opportunity uh, things will stabilize in future we may again look uh, european region as a uh, growth opportunity for us uh, so that is number one and secondly uh, this uh, in uh, as you said that uh, One third is uh, construction and one two third is uh, uh, EP. So in in our order book, uh, as you mentioned, sixty percent is coming from EP plus EPC. So in, even in order book, the ratio is going uh, is same as of now. Or it is a uh, different. Okay, good. <clears throat> See, one thing is very clear, Rahul. Sorry, Anjay. Anjay, sorry. sorry. Naranjay. So I think one thing is very clear that for now we have exited these two subsidiaries for good. There is no consideration to look back because we, from whatever knowledge we have of the last thirty, forty years, we have been in this market. We have not seen growth. Neither we are seeing any policies or anything. Which will bring some growth, except some focus areas which we talked earlier. If there is any semiconductor business which is coming, which is very limited opportunity, we may look at it as a spot opportunity, but definitely not as a target market. The short answer is no, no plans of looking back and going back to Europe. In fact, the resources we are freed from this European subsidies. we are investing some of it we have already invested in new emerging geographies that's number 1 number 2 about ep and epc yes it's our stated objective that we want to increase our ep advanced technology projects and reduce the c the construction portion to the extent possible even by promoting some of the partnerships or collaboration with construction companies number 3 about the mix 60% on ep or epc and 40% on onm again with the type of projects we are getting and with the long term onm we are getting we would definitely like to further improve our onm order book which will give us a good margin lower risk great visibility and a annuity business so obviously any time if we get an opportunity to further enhance the onm proportion in our order book we will always do that and so the so second question with respect to ham ham project uh, we are we have invested close to 74 crore as equity so are we holding 100% uh, in this and uh, Once we exit uh, or we become minority shareholder, our, uh, you said that two twenty crore of the working capital will reduce, right? Correct, yes. Dhananjay. So this, as of as of now, we are the equity holders in these uh, two projects. But as you rightly said, soon as we get the equity partner inducted into these SPDs, we will go down to a minority stake, which is about twenty six percent. in terms of working capital this is basically the long term receivables in the ham projects which we will have to consolidate it is an accounting requirement though we are executing the project the monies are coming in through the mix of debt and equity uh, we have to consolidate this and it is our stated strategy to remain asset like and that is where we are working to as soon as possible induct the equity partner so that we can deconsolidate Uh, these SPs and Dhananjay, just to tell you, this is again the strategy. Like we have one more project in Kolkata, again a Namami Gange project, exactly the same we did. And finally, we brought in a equity partner today. 
our equity share is only 26% and the partner is having 74%, so it is not on our books. Our cash is also back with us, and this we are investing in new projects. If we are going towards completion of the project, the partner can also get confidence and we can get a much better deal when we are going towards completion of the project. Okay. And lastly, you said that uh, this uh, Bangladesh and Chennai project uh, will contri contribute uh, significantly in S2 and, and on full year basis we will be doing some growth. So, uh, any chances of missing growth on full year basis because we have done 12% to, uh, decline in first half. So, also, let's be one thing, make it very clear. First, that is our endeavor, that is our plan. But in the project business, anything can happen. But today, we are confident that our H2 definitely will be better than last year H2. There's no doubt about it. But one thing is clear, that our profitability, our EBITDA, our PAT, our cash will 100% come what may, will be better than last year. There is no doubt about it. The mix is good, the strategy is working, the divestment which we have done on non-performing business will not eat away into our margins and cash and this HAM project will find somebody for equity investment. So all this will definitely have a positive effect on the bottom line as well as on the cash flow. These are two important elements. Yes, growth will happen, repeat, but it is not important for the company as long as we grow on EBITDA and fat and cash. Just to add to Mr. Mittal uh, uh, Dhananjay, uh, if you see, we have margins which are better than last year already, about 13%. We are already net cash in H1, uh, not just on an annual basis. We are also growing on cash even during the quarters and the first half of the uh, year. So I'm sure you understand, as Ms. Mr. Mittal said, growth will be there, plus in any case, we will concentrate on profitable growth and cash back profitable growth. Okay, sir, that is all from my side and wish you a very happy Diwali and also best of luck for your next year completing uh, 100 years. And I think you will, <coughs> we will see better time. Thank you, sir. Definitely, Dhananjay, with all of us doing the right things, we will all see better times and all the best also to you and your family for Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please restrict your questions to two per participant. Next question is from the line of Darshit from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Please. Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. So, well, like most of them have been answered. Just one thing that I needed an overview, uh, like for the next two, three years. Uh, like you said that uh, we can expect 15 to 20 percent growth of order book going forward. So, would that be appropriate to understand? It will be for the next, uh, like two, three years income. Yeah, yeah, definitely. With the kind okay. of order pipeline and our positioning there, yes. We can, that's a fair assumption to have. Okay. And the same thing for uh, order inflow and revenue EBITDA? Uh, for the next yeah, it's years? just all related to each other. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. And uh, happy Diwali. You also. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sandeep Sabarwal from ASK Sandeep Sabarwal. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, I had two questions. One that you have already reached 13% operating margins. So with the O&M uh, also kicking in majorly from next year, where do you see this trending up to? Secondly, there was a resignation by the deputy CEO who just joined last year. So can you just comment on that and on the management strength, how you are going to handle growth as the company grows?
the first one, it's not a deputy CEO, it was deputy managing director. Sure. I think uh, when people move from different city to another city, it always is an issue for them to settle down, their families to settle down. So it was for a personal reason that uh, there was a resignation and uh, what we are very thankful for the time he stayed with us, contributed to us. We are appreciative of that and thankful of whatever value he could add. But uh, saying that, we have a huge strength of management and top leadership here. We have been continuously recruiting good people at all the levels, even at the senior management. We have recently recruited a head of desalination. We have recently recruited director sales and marketing for MIA region. And this all activities, what we discussed, is definitely a part of this initiative where new people are coming, new teams are forming with renewed energy. They are going after the market, and we call it go-to-market teams and all that. I think this definitely has helped us to build this, and it's always a continuous process. For a growing company like that, there will be always a recruitment going on, both at the senior level and at the middle level. Plus, we have also a, a huge HR initiative where we give a lot of importance to our homegrown talent. So a lot of youngsters you find here who are occupying a very senior and a responsible position, most of them are homegrown talent. All right. And on the margins front? Margin is uh, definitely whatever we are giving you. These are after all these corrections, divestments, and less of construction, which used to be passed through in our books. So whatever margins you are seeing, definitely sustainable. If we find more EPs coming in, more O&M is coming in, definitely there is scope for margin improvement. And any of your large projects which are facing any kind of slowdown? Not at all. None of them. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Omkar Jahagirdar, an investor. Please go ahead. Sir, very good evening. And congratulations for Wabak team for generating excellent operating profit margin for quarter two. Uh, my question just now only got answered, but let me ask this question. As every time you used to say, if the project mix remains the same, we will definitely show improved profitability. But do you think near future also, Wabak will keep on getting overseas order to maintain that margin at a higher level? Because earlier our margin was 8, 9 or 10 percent, but just now it is very good at 12, 13 percent. So do you think this margin will be sustainable next six months as well as near future also? Short answer is yes. Just now I answered. This margin, whatever you are seeing, is definitely sustainable. And you must understand that this has just not happened by, by the way. There is some strategy gone into it. There is an implementation of strategy which is gone into it. Just to name just two, what we just talked, the C portion, the construction portion we are reducing, which used to be passed through for us. And second, also some of these European subsidies, which were not giving us the desired EBITDA margins, we have divested that. So these are the two big reasons where we are growing the margin, also the product mix, and as you rightly said, our stated goal is to move more international, more into advanced technology projects, and if we are successful in implementing what we have planned, definitely margins will improve, and this present margin should not be a cause of any worry that it is not sustainable. It is sustainable, and we will continue to meet on this quarterly calls, and we can review this. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Kumar from Determined Investments. 
please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening, team. Uh, just uh, uh, to begin with, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of trying to read inside your order book. Uh, uh, can you be a little louder, please? Yeah, I'm just trying to. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, better. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so I'm just trying to reconcile your order book. Uh, you know, you had mentioned around uh, 12 and a half thousand, uh, uh, you know, crores in the previous quarter. It has gone down to about, uh, you know, 12,100 12, crores, uh, you know, in this particular, uh, you know, quarter, uh, with an execution of around 665 crores, I mean, you know, sales, uh, you know, for this particular quarter. Uh, so order booking has only been about 250 crores uh, odd this quarter, is it? Or have you sort of, have you sort of, Reconcile the order book. Some order has gone out for whatever reason. If you can just sort of uh, help me understand that. See, this quarter we have announced the order of Tunisia, which is about 63 million euro. That is the order which uh, we will have a portion on that, and that is what we have taken in our books. In the first quarter, we had to take out the Swiss, which was the order backlog which Switzerland had, which was uh, taken out. So I think this is the order which is today that your company has, which is executable orders. All right. And I'm just sort of also trying to, uh, you know, understand, I mean, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, let's take the example of this Chennai, uh, you know, project which you've uh, recently won a big project, 4,000 crores, I understand it. Uh, I mean, uh, the, how do you sort of break this down between EPC and ONM? I mean, is this does this go entirely into your ONM book, uh, or uh, you know, I mean, just how do you uh, that 4,000 crores? I mean, how do you sort of uh, you know break it down? How do you sort of book it over what sort of uh, you know time frame? If you can sort of just use that as an example to uh, you know just sort of uh, uh, you know explain that, please. I don't have the exact numbers, but on a broad basis, this is a 42-month project, and you can say starting from October, because that's a start date for the project after meeting all the condition precedent, as we discussed earlier, and two-thirds of this order is going to be the construction portion, which will be executed over 42 months, and one-third after that will be an ONM order which will be executed over the next 20 years. So this is a broad breakup of this total order. As I understand it, that means you'll book around 26, 2700 crores over the next three and a half years, and then the remaining uh, 1400 odd crores, uh, 13, 1400 odd crores over a 20 year period, so about 70 odd crores uh, on an annualized basis. Is that understanding? Absolutely what? correct. This all have an escalation formula. So we will have some escalation going forward, but uh, broadly what you are saying is correct. All right, just sort of one understanding further on this. So, so that's how you break it when you say 56% EPC and 44% ONM. For this project, two-thirds would be part of your EPC order book and the remaining would be part of your ONM order book. Is that understanding? Absolutely correct? right. All right, just one sort of small uh, uh, you know, follow-up on this. Uh, so, uh, as far as this particular project is concerned, uh, you know, uh, given the fact that you are incrementally focusing more on the EP, uh, uh, you know, side, so for this project also you will handle the EP construction would be outsourced or uh, are you managing the construction part yourself? No, no, in this is the EPC order. The C part will flow through our books, but we don't do construction. We will have to manage construction. Designs will be done by us, but actually site work will be done by our subcontractors, and these subcontractors, we will appoint them and manage them and get the work done on time and to our quality. Okay, understood. That's it, Thank you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to please limit your questions to two questions per participant. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Kohli from Goldstone Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Good evening to all, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, congratulations on uh, the margins are certainly an uh, upside surprise. And, in fact, uh, I think the, uh, everyone here on the call is being refer referring to the margins as around you know, 13%, probably for the half year, people are saying, but the margins are even better than that. 
14 percent plus. And so, since you've indicated the, these are going to be sustainable, this is very, very encouraging. Now, so on my question, the first quarter, uh, there was a mention of the disinvestment proceeds for, of the European business. So I'm a little, uh, this thing, I'm looking at the balance sheet. Uh, is that number in the region of about uh, 90 crores to 100 crores? Or I don't know, I've, uh, I think in the last call, I've, there was a mix-up here. I've got 900, so it's probably 900 million. So, uh, or 900 crores. Could you just uh, clarify on this? See, the divestment was uh, done for two European subsidiaries. One is uh, in Switzerland and one in Czech Republic. The cumulative proceeds were about five, five and a half million, uh, or close to six million, I should say. And uh, we recorded this gains in quarter one, which is the proceeds minus the assets, which is about two, two and a half million euros. Sorry, so in uh, rupee terms, how much and uh, and you were they were to come into the balance sheet in this year, this quarter, right? Or is that already no, happening in the first quarter? Everything is on in the first quarter. So this is already out of the balance sheet of the first quarter. We have recorded the gain of about 14 crores. You would see in the investor presentation there is a line called uh, gains from divestment of subsidiaries. The gain is about 14 crores which is roughly about 2 million euros. Yes, 14 crores the gain one recalls, but what about the divestment proceeds? What were they going to be and to what extent were they to be realized in this quarter? No, no, all these were already realized in the last quarter, uh, Sanjay, and that is why we also booked the profit. See, the, the, by divestment we mean we have done a 100% share sale and we received the proceeds we deconsolidated the subsidiary and recorded the gains between the net asset value and the inflows. So the inflows are already done in the last quarter and all the gains have been booked. So none of these subsidiaries, either P&L or balance sheet, is showing up either in quarter one or quarter two of this year. Right. Uh, so, okay. So I was under the impression they're going to be, they're, they're being sold and they're going to be proceeds realized which come in in hard cash over here, which then you're going to utilize for uh, future initiatives. They, they have, the cash has already come in and that is where we said it is in our Austrian entity because this was held as Austria as the holding company and we have already said that whatever we divest resources, time that is released from here, we will put it into the emerging markets. Yeah, but so leave aside the accounting for the gain. What is the amount of the cash which is to come into the consolidated entity? About 5 million uh, uh, euros uh, for uh, um, for Swiss and about 1, 1 and a half million euros for the Czech Republic entity. M million? That was last year million, and the Swiss million. entity was this year and it is about 5 million euros. So I think Sanjay, I, I don't know where I've got this. I've got this uh, number, probably my error, obviously. This from you the can take call. it offline with one of our guys. We can so, take you through. So 1 million was last financial year, and about 5 million was in first quarter of this financial year. Okay, sure. I thought the proceeds were much, much uh, bigger amounts. So that's, uh, These are small subsidiaries doing local business in their own countries. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Abhyankar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Nikhil, the line for you has been unmuted. You may proceed with your question. Yeah, sir. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, we were expecting a desalination project in Mumbai as well. So do we have any update on that? We, there's no update. We don't see any tender coming in. We have been hearing this for last two years, but I don't see this proceeding. So probably <clears throat> now elections are going on in Mumbai. Then the, maybe the general elections will come. We hope mm -hmm. to see this in next financial year. Okay. And also the new initiatives that you have announced, sir. So 
where do you exactly what will be the market for these initiatives will it be domestic or the international market and also the orders that you are expecting from middle east where exactly are they from saudi uae or somewhere from egypt or something this initiative is not any local these are global initiatives whether it's manufactured water whether it's bio cng whether it is hydrogen semiconductor all these are global initiatives this markets are developing as we all know hydrogen is something with all the governments across the uh, globe are pushing for it to reduce their carbon content and go for uh, re- renewable clean fuels so this is happening but still it is economically not viable so the scale has to still come in and which i believe over the next 2 uh, 3 years we will see this picking up like solar did once we get the scale it will be more economically viable same will happen when new manufacturing industries start producing semiconductor they will need this water this will all happen so these are initiative not for next year or this year these are initiatives for next 5 to 10 years which we have to work on it and have this as a backup for our future growth understood just a final question on uh, so you mentioned earlier in the call that we also uh, sold a uh, stake in kolkata ham project so can you just mention what was the uh, valuation at which it was sold how much was the equity invested and uh, how at what valuation did we sell it it's not the stake sold or anything this is where monetization i mean uh we invest we also have another equity uh, investor who takes the majority equity and we take a minority equity and on a project which may be about a 500 crore project our stake in that equity would be about 15 20 crores and the partner stake would be 60 70 crores and rest is all debt we take which is at that spv level right. this project kolkata is funded by ifc washington and tata clean tech so we have a good investors there who have invested in it and uh, we expect that uh, early next year we should start getting our revenues from it because we are nearing completion okay so uh, so i only wanted to understand how much was the equity invested from rn and how much did we get from the investor for selling 76% stake that's what i said uh, nikhil that uh, about uh, 17 18 crores is an investment from us uh-huh. and about the 60 55 60 crores is from the okay. investor okay okay thank you and all the best thank you we have the next question from the line of manish from equity at work family office please go ahead hello yeah thank you sir for the last many many quarter maybe about six seven quarter we have been constantly guiding for profitable growth right underpinned by uh, you know prop, uh, underpinned by profit, profit cash flow and uh, margins right correct right so sir my question to you is for a holistic unified growth to happen in any entity or any company it has to i mean uh, the, the growth has 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 to be has to be i mean the growth growth has to be 60 to 60 degree right meaning that uh, say that again uh, please say clearly and come closer to your speaker what you are saying holistic growth and think for to take place in a company you need you you also need a uh, decent top line growth as well right but in your case this is a very very good question and i thank you that you raised this question for other investors and analysts huh? because the uh, top line growth depends on what is top line consisting of if top line is just a pass through in your pnl which does not give you margin 
then I don't know why top line is important for a holistic growth. Because like we told you, continuously we are talking for last two hours, that construction, ocean is not our domain expertise, not something we like to do, neither we add value, and hence there is not margin on it. So it's like a pass-through. So if I add another 1,000 crores of construction on my top line, which does not give me bottom line, do you see that the company is not growing? Number one. Number two, the uh, European subsidies, which we divested. Again, they may be giving us, like we said, annually about 20, 25 million euro top line. But if they are not contributing to the EBITDA and bottom line and the cash, why should we say that company is not growing? Because company is growing in the right direction. We can grow for the breadth of it. But today we are growing for the depth of it. So I think this has to be very clearly understood that company is growing, our projects are growing, but we are doing things which we are good at and where we can add value. We are not doing things which are non-value activities. No, sir, I completely agree with you. Company is growing, no question about it. But the growth is... Growth is at the at the at the expense of a uh, uh, deep growth in the top line, right? No, why you say expense of? I mm. don't see it's expense of. When we are not having our equal top line or little lower top line, but our bottom line has grown, our EBITDA margins have grown, our cash flows have grown. I think this is growth in the right direction. And this is what is demonstrative of that our strategy is working, the efficiency in the organization is working, we are not wasting our time working on non-value-added activities. So going forward in the second half, what kind of top-line growth can one, I mean, can, can one anticipate? This is what we said, that H2, we are anticipating even in spite of construction volumes will be not or will be lower, our European subsidies volume will not be there. Still, we are saying that we will grow in H2. And obviously, the bottom line will grow faster and much higher than the top line growth. And that's what we call it as a profitable growth. which is demonstrative of the efficiency and the strategy, what we have planned is working. All our ratios are improving, and on a full year, you will see compared to last full year, we will still grow. If you are, for you, top line is important, you can also consider even on top line we will grow. Okay, that's good to hear. The second question is, uh, are we kind of, uh, you know, contemplating a, a plan or a strategy in terms of uh, uh, I mean, reducing our dependency on municipal orders or municipal, uh, yeah, municipal orders? Because our municipal revenue is about 60% of the problem. Not at all. See, what you have to consider... See, always the volume and like manufactured water, we are talking about desalination. Somebody talked about Mumbai, Chennai and other places. Recycle of used water. These are all municipal initiatives. What is important is to focus on orders which have a payment security. Because municipal orders, people always link to delays in payments. Exactly. And we go for multilaterally funded orders. Get this very clear. You can see our order book. 98% of them will be either multilaterally funded, sovereign guarantees like Namami Gange, Amrut and all those, or internationally LC backed up orders. So municipal orders are not uh, reduced. Orders are reduced where we don't have payment security. We don't have good cash flows. We don't have good margins. We cannot use our proprietary advanced technologies. 
those order will be reduced but overall municipal orders will not be reduced correct okay. sir how is our new ai partner pani energy will help in growing or sort of underpinning the business going ahead i did mention in my speech we want i repeat because uh, of the scarcity of both resources experience knowledgeable resources we are trying to build into ai platform which is reproducible repeatability is ensured so all the projects can get the same information same level of service same data though we are not depending on individuals otherwise if i have 20 plants or 30 plants i need 30 good resources here if i have three four good resources we can build this ai platform then all my 30 projects can get the same level of support thank you the next question is from the line of aman from aman investments please go ahead uh, yeah yes sorry Yeah, thank you for the opportunity again, uh, sir. Only two questions I had. First, on uh, usually I ask this, so, sir. From your experience, this financial year, if you can just quote us two or three sub- surprises that you had planned and gone out very well, and some setbacks you had thought before, and two or three setbacks if you have faced in the recent times, if you can just quote your experience, sir. <laughs> Uh, see, so far you have seen from the results. Most of what we thought, what we planned, what we prayed for it, most of it has been delivered, and you can see at the quality of the numbers. If you want to get a word setback, I would not say it's a setback, but for sake of responding to you. i think this large project normally it takes about 3 months for it to become effective but this project took almost 6 months 5 to 6 months to become effective which is delayed our revenue generation of this new order if you would like to call this as a setback maybe that is a setback but numbers are postponed by one quarter but they are not disappeared as i said all condition precedent is achieved and from this quarter we'll start booking revenues especially for engineering and technology part of it and from next quarter we'll start booking some revenues also for construction and procurement okay so on the second question last five minutes uh, we are moving with an entrepreneurial spirit now from tv chairs Uh, how do we see the spirit going forward and also what kind of penetration is in there in sewage water treatment and going uh, going forward what kind of levels do you want india to be to see going forward because we think there is uh, enough uh, healthy balance sheet with state governments uh, well funded and these are very much basic requirements as our demographic goals ahead if you can just comment on that sir the penetration level as well as uh, your perspective about the entrepreneurial story of babak aman uh, you are getting into too much details we are getting very late today so yeah, i sure. think all this we can discuss you can connect with any one of us connect through our company secretary we will put you across our marketing team or a technology team which can give you all these details what you are looking for perfect perfect Okay, sir. Sir, and just one thing I wanted to understand: we are very optimistic about the new ventures of green hydrogen. All are surrounding water only. Uh, what do you think? What? Uh, how much? Do, uh, what possibility or what? Uh, how to term it? Uh, what opportunity do you see water playing in these sectors? And how big sector can these be become uh, going forward? And also, what what role will water play in this? If you can just quote, I mean, if if a spending of capex goes 100 rupees water infrastructure will be costing this much any percentage or any ballpark number you are seeing going forward in these emerging sectors which you are venturing into yeah i think aman uh, uh, just considering the time again um, yeah okay let's, uh, okay let's get into okay. the details you can connect with our ir agency or with our ir representative 
and we'll be sure. glad to support you on on these aspects to the extent uh, we have sure. done. And just final one thing is Namami Gange project been success for us, and going forward we'll be seeing more successes in this project. I think you should answer this question when you go to any of the Ganga, whether it's Hardwar, Banaras, anywhere, and. You look at the quality of the water, what you experienced earlier and what you are experiencing now. And also look at the ghats where you used to visit before and what you visit now. You can answer yourself. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Kumar Hazariwala, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good, ma uh, good evening, sir. Uh, congratulations for uh, a good margin improvement. Uh, my question is regarding uh, regarding this M project. Like how how it was exactly? Like, because I couldn't get into it. Yeah. You said we sell uh, six seven to six percent of our, our equity, and uh, now we have twenty five percent. But how its revenue will work in our favor? Very short, uh, Prashant. And if you want detail, you can also connect with our team. But very short. These are all initiatives coming from government of India with the sovereign security, which is backed by World Bank financing. It comes from the Ministry of Jal Shakti. 40% of the cost of the project is funded by government of India. 60% is expected to be funded by a private player like us, where we have 25% equity and 75% debt. In the 25% equity which we have to fund, 25% of 25% equity which Baba pays, and 75% of the equity which uh, another equity investor pays. And the balance <coughs> debt is taken by debt company in a case where I described it was IFC, Washington, and Tata Clean Tech took the debt, and we are nearing completion of this project in Kolkata. There are three sewage treatment plants, and I'm sure the revenues will start flowing from early next year. The revenues will start flowing once you complete the job and plant goes on operation. It's a 15-year quarterly EMI which government will pay, will take care of your investment as well as your operation and maintenance cost. But, uh, we will get only 25% of the revenue, right? No, we, we are doing a complete 100% EPC Construction is in our scope. O&M for 15 years is in our scope. What you're talking about, 25% is the financial income. The IRR is what we will get 25% and the other equity holder will get 75%. But 100% of O&M, 100% of EPC, we will get. This is our so just to clear this, so we, we are doing construction and EPC of this, so we will get uh, our EBAT, uh, our operating profit from that construction, plus we will get 25% uh, from whatever revenue we can generate for, for next 15 years, right? And also operating profit on our O&M for 15 years. Uh, that, that will be 25% only, right? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. 25%. Operation is by us. So 100% of O&M cost, operating margins will belong to us. Only the financial margins, 25% will come to us, 75% will go to the partner. So what do you mean the financial margins? So Prashant, uh, just to uh, clarify, okay. for us this is like any other EPC and o &M project. So the SPB gets the project, it gives us the EPC, it gives us the o and &M. So for us, we make 100% of margins on the EPC and the o and &M. The equity right. that we will have to put into this SPV will give certain IRRs, which we said we will only invest 25% of the required equity, and 75% will be a majority equity partner. So income in the nature of IRR or dividend will be only to the extent of 25% to us and 75% to the equity partner. And what you also have to note is that we will not keep this capital for the entire period. This will be released in the in two or three years after 
the commissioning of the plant. So that way we also recycle the capital and keep putting it into new projects. Uh, all right, all right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, and con congratulations for a good research. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of P. Ja, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have a limited question, uh, preferably to the finance director. Uh, is uh, Chennai project, as I heard, is it, it has two components, uh, the construction and the annual maintenance. So the, for the construction part of it, 2,500 uh, crores uh, uh, approximately. What will be the margin of the um, company in this? Uh, uh, Mr. Ja, we don't, uh, we don't Maybe generally do not estimate. I mean, uh, uh, let's, let's have a discussion. It will be generally in the nature of our EPC margins because there's a C part of it. So right. those will be typical, those kind of margins you can expect on the EPC project. So uh, uh, we can safely presume that it will be a lower margin uh, work. And so the real margin... No, no, no. Uh, I think... The, it's, we should not talk about lower margin because construction is involved. The C is going to be passed through. So it's okay. not a lower margin. It's the scope is different. If C was not there, then it's like an EP margin. If C is there, it's like an EPC margin. Fair point. So uh, could it be in uh, uh, in uh, double digit uh, numbers? A uh, very rough estimate. Generally, these are competitive information. We don't, you can get in touch with our people. We can do one to one. Fair point. Thank you. All the very best. Thank you, Mr. Ja. Thank you. We have no further questions, ladies and gentlemen. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Mittal for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, everyone, for your active participation in our H1 Q2 FY24 earnings call. We have uploaded the analyst presentation in our website. In case you have any further queries, you may get in touch with our Ad Factors AR advisors, our investor relation advisors based in Mumbai, or you can feel free to get in touch with us directly. Before closing this call, on behalf of the Wabak family, I would like to wish each and every one of you a very happy, prosperous, and safe Diwali in advance. A very good festive season ahead. Thank you so much.